Welcome to Frequency Matters, the RF microwave update series. I'm Pat Hindle, and I'm here with my co-host, Eric Heim. This episode, we're going to start a coverage of the IMS 2024 event taking place in Washington, D.C., June 16 through 21. So our May issue is dual theme for IMS and also has a special focus section for 5G, 6G topics. And you can download this separately as an ebook as we continue to converge our print and digital issues, give everybody an option of either one. The cover feature is full vehicle OTA testing at the core of the connected vehicle revolution. And it's written by a bunch of authors from Rodin Schwartz, and they cover the latest developments of OTA testing of vehicles. So it's a good one to check out. Eric, we had a landmark technical article. So maybe you can tell us about that and the other technical articles in this issue. Thanks, Pat. Uh, so the, the paper that you mentioned is from Ted Rappaport and team at NYU. And Ted has developed a waste figure and waste factor metric for evaluating power efficiency in any cascade. And uh, he's envisioning this as analogous to noise figure and noise factor. Uh, so the article goes through the derivation and has some analysis examples. And uh, Ted's pretty excited about the implications. So we're happy to be able to work with him to get this article out to the industry. Uh, we also have a second part of a two-parter from ADI on selecting the best ADC for phased array radars. Part one explained a method of modeling a system, and part two analyzes the results and draws conclusions from system figures of merit. Uh, and even though the use case is radars, there are some uh, good general takeaways. And uh, as you might expect, and as Pat mentioned, there are lots of excellent articles in our May issue, but I'll close with this one. We had an interesting article from RFHIC about using high-power GAN amplifiers to replace magnetrons in a waste pyrolysis system. Uh, and it's currently being trialed on a cruise ship, but there are a host of applications. Uh, so that's an interesting use for GAN. Yeah, I love when we get articles on different topics like that because you just never know where microwaves are being used. So uh, continuing on the OTA topic from the cover feature, we had a tech brief covering millibox's expanded antennas test system capabilities for millimeter wave and sub-terahertz OTA measurements. So that's a good one to check out. Uh, Eric, what do we have for our product features? Three good ones. Uh, Signal Hound is introducing a millimeter wave spectrum analyzer with 110 dB of dynamic range and one terahertz per second sweep speeds. It offers 160 megahertz instantaneous bandwidth. And there's a companion part that has the same specs and adds in a 10 gigabit Ethernet SFP plus port. And uh, we also have Aravant introducing a new family of rotary joints that cover the waveguide bands from 50 to 170 gigahertz. So the article details why you might need a rotary joint and some of the design techniques they use. And uh, continuing that millimeter wave waveguide theme, we've also got an article from Flan Microwave discussing their family of rotary vane low-cost attenuators, and that gets into uh, the design and construction techniques along with where they believe market growth for those types of attenuators will come from. And now we have some special guests who join us from many circuits for this episode, and they're going to discuss the 75-ohm CATV market and the recent acquisition of the CATV business from analog devices. Let's take a look at a clip from that now. And Rich, so uh, what are Mini Circuit's plans for the CATV broadband market? You know, how does this acquisition of the Santa Rosa team change your strategy? Well, we've we've really been focused on the evolution, the DOCSIS market. So the uh, the move to DOCSIS 4.0 and the higher speeds and the higher capacities that are needed uh, by the network uh, operators. So obviously, adding the the active amplifiers to our passive port product portfolio is is a great benefit to us. So We've seen uh, certainly network operators investing more and more now, you know, to improve the uh, competitive performance of their networks, the wired networks against fiber and fixed wireless access. And there's been a lot of, you know, there's an upgrade required in the system, I would say, and it's, it's, it's been ready to come and it's going to be launching. We're going to see this over the next five to 10 years. And really, we're going to be at the heart of that activity, driving, uh, driving the rollout with faster speeds, particularly the upstream stuff, you know, for two-way video communication, interactive gaming, et cetera. 
So really our emphasis, it's on, you know, more efficient products and higher data rates, and that fits right in with what mini circuits is, uh, is in our DNA. Yeah, really interesting developments from any circuits as they acquired that group from analog devices, so it'll be interesting to watch them as they expand. Turning to the news, Northeastern University is launching a first-of-its-kind institute for nanosystems innovation, or NanoSI, and they'll be straddling both coasts of the U.S. NanoSI will develop technologies on this scale, driving innovation and miniaturization across a wide range of functions, and they aim to research the landscape of the chip-level technology advancements and applications. Also saw that the satellite company SES has agreed to buy Intelsat Holdings for $3.1 billion in a deal that would create a major European player, but kind of raise concerns with investors around the debt that they have. And Europe has kind of been looking, the satellite companies there, to consolidate to better uh, compete with the likes of Elon Musk's SpaceX-owned Starlink and Amazon's Project Kuiper. And in more European news, in the European Union's drive to support a multifaceted approach to addressing 6G challenges and promises, CEA Leti has been chosen to coordinate two projects that will help build first-class 6G capabilities and boost standardization across Europe. The two projects include distributed intelligence sensing and communications, and also goal-oriented AI-enabled learning and systematic communications networks which are launched in a three-year projects, and they all started in January with a bunch of EU collaborators. And we did a podcast with them recently, so that'll be publishing soon, so keep an eye out for that. Eric, what did you see in the news? Uh, GSA released a report entitled 5G Non-Terrestrial Networks and Satellite Connectivity. And interestingly, they state that while the full extent of their potential to complement terrestrial networks, as well as phone services and broadband is still unclear, Satellites are rapidly gaining prominence in cellular communication. Uh, they've identified 77 publicly announced partnerships uh, between operators and satellite vendors across 43 countries and territories, and they've got several other metrics. So things are definitely happening, uh, but the GSA has concerns about the business model, it seems. And ID TechX recently published a report, 3D Electronics Added to the Electronics, 2024-2034, uh, technologies, players, and markets. And the report weighs the pros and cons of several different approaches with case studies showing how different manufacturing techniques and materials meet the requirements for application opportunities across the automotive, consumer goods, IC packaging, and medical device sectors. And the press release is very thorough, so I don't think the report will disappoint. And turning to events, all eyes are on IMS now. In our May issue, we cover the IMS event with the overviews of the conferences, including RFIC and ARFTAG, also special events, you know, workshops, panels, and the exhibition. The theme this year is capitalizing across the spectrum, being in Washington, D.C., and the technical themes uh, the tie it to the Capitol's role include systems and applications, aerospace and security, Spectrum Coexistent and Sustainability, and Emerging Technologies and Future Directions. And there are also boot camps this year on quantum, AIML, RF, and wireless power transfer. So a lot going on there. And we'll have our IMS online show daily microsite live next week. So you can check that out. It'll keep you up to date on all the latest news and happenings with the event. Eric, what do we have for the plenary sessions that are going on at IMS? IMS opening plenary session is redundancy from the seafloor to space, building reliable capabilities for the joint force given by Heidi Shu, Under Secretary of Defense for Research and Engineering. The IMS closing session is real-world performance measurements of cellular networks using smartphones, given by Manisha Ghosh, Professor of Electrical Engineering, University of Notre Dame, and former Chief Technology Officer at the FCC. And that wraps up this episode. Our sponsor is Mini Circuits. Mini Circuits is a global leader in the design, manufacture, and distribution of RF and microwave components and integrated assemblies with more than 10,000 active models. And remember, as a member of the industry, a subscription to Microwave Journal is free. So please visit our site and subscribe today if you're not already a reader. Thanks for watching this episode, and please join us next time for another Frequency Matters.